myself. I think that's the attitude of a lot of people. Amen. Mighty nice young sister there, that last verse. I sure appreciated that. Uh, we Coming into New Year's night, I don't think you could sing anything any better, any more appropriate <clears throat> for this night. Looks like we're starting the year off good. Good and snowy and sloppy outside. Typical Indiana weather at this time of year. So, you people from Georgia, I see here, I'm up in Ohio. Now, Brother Dow, you and Sister Dow know what that is. Ohio is the same. And, but we're going to a land where there not be any of that. That's the thing. This is New Year's night of Eve. And, of course, everybody's got a vow wrote out and a pledge you're going to make for New Year's. And by the day after tomorrow, they'll all be broke. <laughs> You know, you turn a new page every year and then turn back the next morning, <laughs> get it again. But there's just one thing that, that I would like to say, and that is that, like Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things are in the past, all my mistakes Amen. and all the things that I've done, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. Amen. That's the only regret that I have is my errors for the past year and the past part of my life and only humbly asking for grace to press on towards the mark of the high calling. Amen. I'm sure that's the testimony of, of all of us. We'd all feel that way. Sorry that it's such a bad night and and people didn't get to come and I called Brother Neville, I didn't even know where he could get here or not, and then Brother Skaggs come up, and he'd come from way down in Kentucky where she's three feet or better down in there. And so, or about like this, he said. So he had a farmer pull him out a couple of times and put him over a hill with a tractor. And so I thought, well, if it's just two or three inches, we won't mind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just like that. But the roads are passable. And everybody's going on. Now, of course, tonight is a night where we hear from a variety of ministers, different ones who come in, and they'll probably be coming all along through the different parts tonight. Up till midnight, I think they set and watch if the, for the New Year's to go come in and the old one to go out. And usually they call around the altar and pray and and make their vows to God and renew their their vows. I told Brother Neville and I called him to see if he was coming. I said if he didn't come, I'd try to carry on the best that I could. And then if he couldn't get here in the morning, why well, I'd continue on to do all that I could while. He, was, um, he wasn't here, and I told him I was going to try tonight, think about just having a, about a 15 minutes message or something, and we see we've got several other ministers sitting here waiting. So uh, I will start, start and just continue on in this book of Revelation. Just go right on down, pick up the fourth chapter now, start off. And if we don't get through with it this time, the next time we'll continue on, then go to the fifth and sixth and just as we can the Lord help us to get through it I want to say before we start that there was a, had a visit a while ago from from uh, brother Rummett Toms and his wife it's his, her mother and father sitting here tonight and they're just returned from Africa where they've been having great soul saving services and Divine healing services. This little lady took her, I believe, her grandmother's place the other day and having a jail service. And sinners come to the Lord and everything. It's just wonderful how God's using that young couple. They're here now in America for a while to do some evangelism. If any of you pastors, I want to write Brother Brumman. Um, Brumman, I got get that name all mixed up. Why couldn't he just tuck a good English name and forgot about it? Let's just give him a number. What do you say? Well, I can't get that note. I don't think half of us can get it. Drummond, I think, is the right way you pronounce it. And um, Sister Charlotte, um, if any of you like to have them, I'd sure like to hear them get in your church. That lady, little Sister Charlotte, she's just a kid. She's given testimony up there a while ago to meet her, the experience they had in Africa. And I tell you, it was... Billet brought old times back again. Sound like speaking Afrikaans. And so the battle is on down there as well as it is here. And if anybody would like to have Brother Drummond for a, and Sister Charlotte for a, a campaign in their church, 
If you would, you just call Brother Tony Zabel there at mail row 73945. If you'd like to put it down to some of you ministers, I certainly recommend Brother, or he's a good preacher, a sincere boy that really needs to start. Get started out. And he's fearless, good boy. I like him very much. Now remember, mail row 73945. And I'll leave this little card here, whether if you, that's your card, and if you happen to not be able to put the number down, well, you can come pick it up uh, any time after the intermission between the different services tonight, and uh, get their number and call them if you'd like to have them in some of your churches for a meeting, or someone that you know that would like to have them, because they're just crusading across America. Isn't that something? Africa has to send missionaries over here to America. This is the place they're needed. Amen. Right here. Worse than it is over there. So, I'm mean, glad and happy the Lord spared you through another year. And here we are, coming up to the end of the road. And pray that God will forgive us of all of our sins and our shortcomings. And I want to say this before I start. I wish to each one of you all the most successful and blessful and healthy New Year's that I can wish to you. God be with you. May you grow both physically, spiritually, financially, and materially. Everything that God can bring up on you, I pray that He'll do it. I'm facing a new year myself. God only knows what lays in the future. And our decisions have to be made right away. We got all of our stuff for the gym up there. Got it ready now for... The invitations and things from internationally, worldwide, to see where the Lord will lead us. And I certainly solicit the prayers of you people to pray with all your heart that God will never let me be misled. Uh, I, if anything, I want to be as sincere and never be misled. And now, I've had a good year. Many times people misunderstand. And when they say, Brother Abraham, you're, you're, you don't go to the places like you used to and like these other ministers do and have all the... Uh, I learned one thing, that learning a lesson from our Bible and from our Lord, that Jesus was not a showman. He, he liked that. He didn't have showmanship. He, he, he wasn't a showman at all. And I don't believe that his disciples are showmen. Never did they ever make themselves showmen. That's where I think we miss the boat a lot today. Maybe it's just my own idea. That when we have to make a big blow about everything, you know, I, I think it looks like it's more of a show than it is the sacredness. Did you notice in the coming of the Lord, those who really received him was Simeon. Nobody never heard nothing about him. But he's looking for the Lord. Blind Anna in the temple. John the Baptist in the wilderness. And those, John, went in the wilderness at nine years old. Never appeared again until he was 30. In the wilderness. And man like that who secretly uh, believed and kept humble, they was looking for the coming of the Lord. Amen. And they never did blow their meetings up and have to put it on great signs the hour of the time and, and telecast and everything. That's all right to those who want to do it that way, but to me that doesn't seem Christ-like. I know one time his brother told him, said, hey, you do these miracles and things, why don't you go up here to, the, to Jerusalem? And uh, we're going up to the Feast of Passover. Call out Caiaphas, the high priest, and all those, and let them know, do it before them like that, that they might see your works. And I see, what are you fooling with? A bunch of fishermen and so forth down on the river and that low class of people. Why won't you get up here and let the world see it? See, Jesus said, your hour is always, mine hour has not come. John was one time, John the Baptist, the, the scripture spoke of him coming and said when he come that, well, Isaiah said about 712 years before he was born, there'd be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. And it said, all the mountains skip like little rams. All the leaves clap their hands. The high places was made low, and the low places was made high. Such prophecies as that. 
What do you think ministers of that day, when they picked that up, they must have said, My, when that great prophet comes, everybody will know him. God will just spread back the canopies of the sky, the corners of heaven will roar down, a chariot of fire will move down, an angelic band escort him to the earth. When he comes, he was an old fuzzy-faced preacher with a piece of shit, sheepskin wrapped around him with a piece of leather for a belt. Probably never took a bath every three or four months. Out there in the wilderness, come out standing mud knee deep, preaching to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He never went to no cities. If anybody wanted to hear him, they come out to Jordan to hear him. Did it want to? What did he do? He shook the nation. He shook the world. There's a shaking going on that people don't know nothing about. When Jesus come, he never represented himself among the big highs. He come to his own. He come to those who were looking for him. There's where the shaking comes. That's what he does today. The Holy Spirit comes to those who God has called. There's a great shaking amongst the elect. Great powerful thing going on, but the world knows nothing of it. They think all this big flowery stuff and worldwide broadcasts and televisions and million dollar buildings and everything. And that's the thing that's going great. That's foolish to the sight of God. God don't look at big things. What man calls foolish, God calls great. And what man calls great, God calls foolish. It pleased him to the foolishness of preaching to save those which were lost. Now, John, what do you think it says? It's an old fanatic out there. Old fuzzy face looking fella come out of the wilderness with a sheepskin wrapped around him and why he stands in mud barefooted out there on the side of the Jordan and carrying on out there. Who ever heard of such a thing? When Jesus comes, a Messiah born over there in a stable over a pile of straw and, and the cattle lowing around. And, and you mean with a mother illegitimate as his father, the mother was to be mother before he was even wed? Why, well, he's born out of holy wedlock, that fella? Oh, my. See? But it was great. <laughs> they just didn't know it. See? They didn't know it. And so is the gospel today great. Amen. The gospel shaking like it's never shook before. Amen. But it's shaking in the remnant. That's right. Fixing them ready. He came to his own. His own received him. Now he told his disciples, don't go in the ways of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as you go, he that receives you receives me. When you go into a city and won't receive you, shake the dust from your feet and walk away. And verily I say unto you, be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of the judgment. It will be for that city. And every one of those cities that refused those men are laying in ashes today. Everyone that did receive him is still standing as a spire. That's Amen. right. See, it takes a long time to answer, but God answers. Don't worry. I don't get started on that. I never get into Revelation. Oh, oh, I want to see him Amen. look up on his face. There to sing forever of Amen. his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. When tears all pass and home at last, ever to rejoice. Amen. I like that. Let's bow our heads just a moment. Would you like to stand before you do it? I, I think the Bible said when you stand praying, forgive. How many has a request? We'd just like to just let it be known by a lifted hand. Remember, God sees it. He knows all of that. Our Heavenly Father, we are approaching thy divine holiness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that all-sufficient name that was given here among men, that even the families in heaven and in earth is all named Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you'll receive our thanksgiving. First to begin this uh, dying year as we're issuing it out tonight in service. Issuing it out, giving praise, studying thy word, and knowing what thus saith the Lord means. How many things could we put out on a paper to be thankful for? The little narrow escapes that we've had this year where Satan would have smothered our life out. But you're not through with us yet. So we're still continuing on. We believe, Lord, that we're only born and raised in this world to honor and glorify Thee. And we pray, Father, You forgive us for every trespass and every mistake that we've made down along the journey. Let us forget our mistakes tonight as we confess them, bearing them in the sea of forgetfulness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, never to dig them up again, but now press towards this mark. 
to that perfect man, Christ Jesus. Grant it tonight, Father, as your servants speak, each of them, may you anoint them with the spirit of life, and may they preach like never before, and bring the messages into the church tonight. And we've gathered here under this little roof that we're grateful for it, Lord. Amen. We're thankful to have a warm fire to set by, Amen. for a roof over our head. That's all necessary, for our treasures are not in this world. It's in the world that is to come. God, we are laying up there where we believe that thieves can't break in and rob and moth does not corrupt it, for our treasures are eternal life. Amen. And we pray, Father, that you let us cherish that all the days of our life. Make us fit servants. Take all evil out of us, Lord. Amen. All the past. Let it, may all roots of malice and all bitterness be taken from our lives that we might be humble and sweet before Him. Grant it, Lord. Let us have the greatest year we've ever had yet this coming year. Grant it. Give us now tonight of Thy Word as we wait further for Thy messages. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And be seated. It's kind of hard for me to see that clock around there, and I don't want to keep my brethren waiting, so I'll try to hurry as fast as possible and get this part out, and maybe if we do not finish up, then tomorrow morning we will try to maybe continue on, if the Lord willing. And then if Brother Neville doesn't get down or whatever, well then I'll try, the Lord willing, to be here to carry on the Sunday school service. Now, don't forget now, pray, pray the only way, reach higher ground, pray, pray the prayer of faith will bring God's blessings down. Amen. That's the only way you'll ever do it. Let's sing it together. That's New Year's now. we got plenty of time. Uh, pray, pray the only way to reach the higher ground. Pray, pray the prayer of faith will bring God's blessing down. So if the prayer of faith brings God's blessing down, let's continue to pray. So glad tonight we got new faces in the kingdom of God that wasn't in last year. And I'm um, just continuing praying that more and more will be added all the time. And a half has never yet been told what will be on the other side. Amen. Now we turn to the fourth chapter of Revelation. Does anybody need a Bible? we got some Bibles up here if you'd like to follow us. Or one of the ushers come forth. Now we've just got a whole string of Bibles here. One of the trustees, ushers, or something come up here right away, Brother Zabel. Let one more come, too, if you want to take both sides. And um, we'll go right down the aisle. And anybody wants the Bible to follow along with us, well, just take it right down and give them to anybody that wants them. And we want you to turn now to Revelations, the fourth chapter. And uh, if you're setting back and want to move forward, we just got plenty of room tonight for you to move up and make yourself comfortable and just... Um, Get right into the lesson and help me read it and study it as we come together. The seats up here, I see a couple coming, and here's two seats right here. Here's one for that single one right in here, and right back in here. There's just seats up here. I guess the blowers are just kind of universal. And um, now, how many enjoyed our lesson that we just had, the eight-day lesson on the seven church ages? Thank you. Makes me feel good because I really got a great blessing out of them myself. Now tonight was the fourth chapter. We're leaving off now. John had spoke to the Laodicean church age. And in this Laodicean church age, it was the most messed up church age of all the rest of them. And we found the most pathetic thing in the last part of the Laodicean church age Jesus standing on the outside of his own church where he had been put out, knocking at the door, trying to get back in. Amen. Isn't that sinful? I think that 
about one of the most pathetic scriptures that I've ever read. Jesus outside of his own door. And his church had put him out and he was trying to get back in to only save them. Any man that will open, let me back in my own house. I'll sup with him and he with me. Isn't that, isn't that pathetic? The God of heaven put out of his own church by their creeds and denominations and the way they were doing, put, them out, put him out of the church, accepted their creed. It's the very same thing as it was the day that Jesus was crucified. And that was that when uh, they accepted Barabbas, a murderer, and crucified Jesus, loosed a murder among them that was proven a murder, and accept and turned down Jesus Christ, the only one who could give them life. And that's the same thing every denomination in the Pentecostal denomination has got today. They see that those denominations die just as quick as they denominate. There never has been a one in, in the pages of history that ever denominated, that ever done anything but die immediately. Amen. All signs, wonders, and gifts left them and everything else as soon as they denominated. Amen. And instead of accepting the Lord Jesus to give them life, they went right straight back and loose Barabbas among them again. Amen. Isn't that something awful? Amen. No wonder God was put right out of his church and standing knocking. The last church age trying to get back in. Now, we find out that Revelations is blocked off in three parts. The first is the first three chapters pertains to the church, the message, the angel, to the angels of the church. And, from, and then she disappears right there in the third chapter. Does not appear again until the 19th chapter. In the 19th chapter, she returns. Between this time, God's dealing with the Jews. Then, from then on, is between the coming of the great city of Jerusalem and the uh, sealing away of the people of Israel and so forth at the end time. Now, so tonight we leave uh, immediately after this. John had saw on the Isle of Patmos. How many remembers how far Patmos was off of the uh, uh, out from the shore? How far out was it? About 30 miles, that's right, out from the coast. And how far was it around Patmos? You remember some of the geographics? About 15 miles around it. And it was uh, used for an exile for the Romans, put prisoners out there. And John was out there for what? What did he do? Did he, did he uh, steal something? No. No? Was he put him out there because he was uh, uh, disturbing the people and uh, doing something evil? No. What was he out there for? For the word of God and his testimony. Yes. For preaching the gospel. And uh, can anything happen to a Christian without it's for the best? No. No. Amen. no. So what did God get him out there alone on the island for? Give us this book of Revelation. Amen. See, God just can pull the wool over the devil's eyes anytime he wants to, can't he? <laughs> he just simply say, I just love him because I don't have to be smart. See? I, I, if I was smart, I'd try to forget all about it. Because I know no one could be as smart as him. And so I, I just, whatever I got, I surrender myself to him and just do what he says do. Amen. And so sometimes it's very contrary the way I think it is. But I know if he's leading, he's smart, he knows what he's doing. I don't. So I just let him do it. You see, man, just, Amen. Oh, I say, that's it, brother. Like it. Yes, sir. Just let him do it. See, he's the one who knows what he's doing. I don't. See. So I just don't try to have any great big flowers and things and just humble myself and say, here I am, Father, anytime you want me. <laughs> so just go right on like that, and it always comes out right. So, John, we wouldn't have had a, a book of Revelations if it hadn't been for John. And it, John hadn't went out on the aisle. That was God's way of giving us the book of Revelations. He was out there, I think, about three years and um, on the book, uh, wrote the book of Revelation. Now, then we leave him. At the last of the invitation of the 22nd verse of the 3rd chapter, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now I begin the 4th chapter. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard 
was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. We're going to take it verse by verse. And I've got a lot of scriptures wrote down here, a book of them. And I don't know how far we get into it. May the Lord lead it. Now watch. The word is after these things. After the church age. And all this from here after now will be pertaining, will take place on earth after the rapture of the church. See? After the rapture. This is going back now to pick up Israel. After the church age. After the ages of the church. And the, the church never appears again until Revelations, the 19th chapter. When she returns with her bridegroom. Amen. Praise God for the wedding. Let's just read that. Would you like to read these scriptures as we go through? All right. Let's turn to Revelations 19. All right, so Revelations 19. Let's begin at the seventh verse. Revelations 19. This is when the church appears again, never appears again till over the 19th chapter. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. Oh, I could preach on that till midnight. Not half tell it. Look, his wife hath made herself ready. Charlie and Ellie and you all just what we was talking about in Rodney the other day. See? When Elisha sewed that garment up on Elijah, or Elijah put it up on Elisha, he reached back and took it off again. Put it on himself and walked with it on him till he crossed Jordan and went on the mountain and got up in the chair. Dropped it back. When a Christian's first saved, his face is turned towards Christ, then he's got something to do himself. He has the next thing, sanctify himself. From all unclean habits, laying aside every weight, making herself ready. The bride has made herself ready. Reminds me of a little story. I just must say it before we go on. Out west here some time ago, many years, there was a, this great uh, armor and swift packing company. How they do, they come out there and buy cattle and buy ranches and they're worth a lot of money and buy up all the small ranchers and have millions of acres of ranch like that. Run these big fine Herford cattle and, and sections run on their own railroads and things that bring them cattle from one pasture to another. And armor and swift had a big ranch and one day they had a foreman there, the superintendent it was of the ranch. He had about four or five daughters. And they found out that one of the big armor brothers was, uh, or not brothers, but sons were going to visit the ranch. And he was a, a young single man. And all these girls was sure was going to vamp this boy as soon as he, he come. And so they all was getting ready and making everything ready to come. When he got there, they was going to meet him and put on an old frontier day with their uh, little dresses on with their fringe on it and 44s on each hip and them uh, hats on the back of their head. You know, there's going to be regular Westerners and each one of the girls was going to get, one of them was going to get this boy. And they had a, a little cousin there that her mother was dead. Her father was dead. She was a cousin and she almost was the slave to all that was there and all the dirty work she had to do it. Washing the dishes and everything. And She had no clothes. She had to take hand-me-downs. And so when the time come that the boy was to arrive, they all got in their buckboards and away down to the station. They went to receive him and they were shooting the guns and the horses nickering and everything and they brought him out to the ranch and that night they had a big shindig and they got out there on the haystacks and the corral fence and they they sang and they danced and all through the night 
He was there for two or three days. This little cousin. Now I'm going to liken this to something now. Our cousins that's all dressed up. Big spires and fine churches and look like there's any dirty name that has to be given to the Pentecostals. Something is wrong. They do the wrong thing too, but they don't hear about it. You see, they're kind of classical, so they don't hear about that. But let some Pentecostal minister make a mistake one time. Well, brother, I'm telling you, they'll pack her across the country in every newspaper. Yes, sir. Let some Pentecostal brother pray for a child and it dies, every newspaper in the country will pack it. Uh, divine healing is fanaticism. Well, then how not put every case in the paper that the doctor loses? Sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. So if uh, they do that, they wouldn't have enough room in the columns and the papers to write all the day. <clears throat> if I go out here in the graveyard and say, everybody that ever died under divine healing, stand up. And then say, everybody ever died under medical treatment, stand up. It outnumber them a million to one. And that's exactly right. So if they're going to criticize one, criticize the other. That's right. But they kill millions a year with medicines and operations. You never hear a word about it. So this little girl, she had all the rough work to do. So when all at once the boy, one night when supper was over and they'd had dances and each one of these girls had put it all up, you know, and this poor little girl had to have a little old ragged dress on and one night, she sitting in the mess hall after the supper was over, and she washed the dishes, and she ran out through the backyard to throw the dishwater out. She, when she turned around the corral fence, there he stood leaning at the corral fence. He said, hello? She was so ashamed because that was the superintendent's boy, the son of the owner of the ring. She held the dish down, pan down so he wouldn't notice her so ragged. Started backing off with her bare feet, looking back like this. And he walked up to her and said, don't be afraid of me. Said, I want to tell you something. He said, I come out here for one purpose. I come out to find a wife. And said, I've been looking everywhere. Said, I didn't want to marry any of the girls back there in the city. I want to get what I thought was a real wife. Instead of all that I've seen, I've been noticing you around here, and I found out through some of the hands that you're a cousin. I said, that's right, sir. I said, I want to ask you something. Will you marry me? Well, she didn't know what to do. She was so beset. She didn't, she didn't know how to answer the man. Oh, I just about imagine how she felt, don't you? When me, a sinner once, no good for nothing, a drunkard's child... Jesus Christ said, I want you for mine. How could he ever come to somebody like me? How could he ever say, I'll give you a home in heaven? How could he ever say, I'll save you, such a wretch as me? How could it ever be? But he did it. She said, sir, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not worthy. I couldn't make a wife to a man like you said, because you are used to great things, and I know nothing about them, I'm poor. He said, but you are my choice. And wasn't it nice when Jesus told you that uh, you know you wasn't worthy to be a Christian, you, it wasn't nothing you could ever do, but he, it's nothing, he, he just chose you. He, it was his goodness, his mercy that he chose you. You didn't choose him, you know, he chose you. That's right. She said, I, I don't, she said, don't look at your clothes. I don't look at your clothes. I look at what you are. He said, will you marry me? And finally the agreement was made. He said, one year from this day, I will return. You be ready. Have the wedding garment on. For I will return and marry you right here on these grounds. I'll take you to Chicago to Outer Drive there where you'll have a castle to live in. All this dishwashing will be over and things then. When the sisters of the cousins heard about that, they said, you poor little ignorant fool. Why, you know that man didn't mean that. And isn't that just exactly what to say today? How could a bunch of holy rollers, a bunch of people who hardly can write their own name, how would they ever be the church? How would a group like that ever be? But that's just all right. 
when we got engaged and felt that betrothal kiss of Jesus Christ on our heart to take away our sins, something tells us that He's coming back again. Yes, he's coming back. Someday He'll come back. All year she worked, slaved, and saved her little 75 cents for what they gave her for her wages a day. And she was saving up her money to buy her wedding gown, to make everything ready. Oh, that was all her thought, making ready. And he has, she has made herself ready. She got her clothes, her wedding clothes, while her cousins laughed at her and made fun of her. Finally come to the final of the day, she dressed herself in her wedding garment. Got all ready, cleaned up. And her little cousins come around and bow by her and said, Well, you silly little thing. Why, you know he didn't mean that. He wouldn't speak to a, or marry a girl like you. But she made herself ready anyhow. Yeah. So it come along late in the evening and they began to mock and make fun of her. She stood right at the door waiting anyhow. And so she, he said, What time did he say he'd be here? He said he didn't say. But said she t- he told me tonight that he, mar- he gave me an engagement ring. He said, he told me it would be about one year from now. Therefore, I've got an hour left. Amen. Just kept waiting. i got one hour left. Thirty minutes left. <laughs> Ten minutes left. And they laughed and made fun of her and called her and everything. But finally, right at that crucial hour, they heard the sand turning under the wheels. <laughs> the horses are coming. What a thing it was to see that little bride and made herself ready, jump out of the door and run through the rose-covered trellis out there to fly into the arms of the man that she loved and to be her husband, to pick her up in like that and be married and right away. Some of these days, brother, those who are making fun and saying Holy Roar and, and Pentecostal and things like that, we're awaiting. We still got a little time. They say, oh, there's no difference what there ever was. Don't worry. We got a little time left. And at that moment that he promised, he'll be here. And some of these days we'll take a flight and go away. Just be ready. Keep the wedding garment on. Keep all cruel out of your heart. Everything. That's, listen to how the scripture reads here. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Get it? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Praise be to God. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So there's going to be a meeting in the air one of these days. And a sweet, sweet by and by. Just stay ready. Keep yourself ready. Purge your heart from all evil thinking. Have faith in God, no matter how dark it looks and how many laughs and makes fun and says, you've made a mistake, keep right on living holy and living for God. Just keep moving on. The hour will arrive. So you see, she appears again now in Revelation 19. After these things, after he had seen the church age, after these things, I looked and behold, a door. Now remember, John is still on Patmos. Amen. And after he'd seen all the church ages go through, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. A door. What is a door? Revelation 3 8, and Revelation the third chapter, and the eighth verse. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut it. Can shut, no man can open. He is the door. The door. Christ is the door. He said in St. John 10, I am the door to the sheepfold. And in the old country, you find that a shepherd runs in his sheep after he counts them and sees they're all in, then he lays down right in the door. The wolf can't come in without waking him up or a sheep can't go out without coming over him. 
Oh, how safely the sheep feel because the shepherds laid down in the door. Amen. Noah, in the Old Testament, stood in the door of the ark. Oh, listen, I'm going to say something. He stood in the door and preached repentance and righteousness to the people that laughed at him. And in that same door that he stood in, no man could come into the ark except for that one door. Amen. One but one door in the ark. And there's only one way. Amen. All right, brother. There's only one way Amen. that goes into the body of Christ. There's only one door to the church of the living God. Amen. And Jesus is that Amen. door. Amen. I am the door. I am the way, the road that leads to the door. I am the door to the sheepfold. Amen. He said to this church age, I set before you an open door. He said that to the Methodist church age. They turned away from it. Amen. What an organization. But I set before you an open door. Now, as they receive sanctification, he said, I'll put the open door, which is the Holy Spirit, the one spirit we are all... Now, baptized into one body, which is Christ. Amen. He set that message before the Methodist church, and they turned aside from it. They come up to sanctification and refuse the Holy Ghost. Remember that? That open door. How do you get into Christ? By one Spirit. Holy Spirit, which is Christ's Spirit. We enter in, not by handshaking, not by sprinkling, but by one Holy Ghost baptism. We are all baptized into one body and made partakers of that Amen. body. Amen. One Holy Ghost baptism into that door. This door set in heaven. That door, when he looked up, he saw the Lord Jesus. Just watch the following part of it. That door, the Lord Jesus... I looked and behold a door was open in heaven and the first voice I heard was the voice of a trumpet. Now, the scene is changing. John's been watching Patmos. And now he looks up. What? Wow. You see something went on on earth here, these church ages. All down the seven church ages. And then after he got through seeing the church ages, after that, after the church ages had ceased, he heard a voice and he looked up towards heaven and he seen an open door. And the first voice sounded like a trumpet. Or it seen change from Patmos to heaven. The voice was the same voice that walked in the seven golden candlesticks. Same voice. The voice didn't change. But the voice, where was it when he heard it the first time? How many remembers the First church age, behind him. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Revelations 1, 1, 10. So he, in the Spirit, if you want to put that down, Revelations 1, 10 and 13. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me as the voice of the trumpet and sounded like many waters. And when I turned to look, I saw one standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Amen. Now, after he showed him all that mystery of them seven golden candlesticks holding the cells and stars and a white wig on and so forth and feet like brass and eyes like fire, the symbol. Then he heard the same voice. Watch. Speaking from heaven. And he looked up and he saw an open door. Oh, an open door into heaven. How do you get in? By Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. One door. One way. No other way. Any man that climbs up any other way, same as a thief and a robber. Amen. And in the parable of the one who climbed up and was at the wedding supper without a garment on, was found guilty and bound and cast out into outer darkness. Amen. Only one way. Coming to the wedding supper. I believe I preached on it here not long ago. Yeah. Whenever the bridegroom, when a man got, gets married in the old country, he has to give the invitations himself. He has to furnish the robes himself. So when he met this man there in setting up the supper table, 
How many remembers the parable? Sure, you read the Bible. And he found the man at the supper table without a wedding garment on. Amen. What is it? The bridegroom stands at the door and all comes up with an invitation. No man can come to the Father except by me. All the Father has given me or invited will come to me. Here they come. Give their invitation. The bridegroom sort everybody to look alike. That's one thing about good old time Holy Ghost religion. It makes them all look alike. Amen. Whether they're rich or poor, bond or free, black or white, male or female, they're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the bridegroom stood at the door and received the invitation, put the robe around this fellow so the rich and poor all looked alike. That's the way it is in the kingdom of God. There's no big guys or little guys. They're all one guy. <laughs> all one in Christ. Now what do you think when the bridegroom come back and found the man sitting there without a wedding garment on? He said, friend, how'd you get in here? And he stood speechless. It showed that he come some other way besides the door. Amen. He come in a window. He come in a back door. And he called him a friend, showed he was a church member. Friend, how did you get here without a garment on? Now Jesus said this himself. And he called to the porters. He said, bind him. Put in hand, and he was cast out into outer darkness, where thou be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That's Christ's own word. Yeah. Right, he was cast out. Because it proved without the wedding garment, he come some of the way besides the door. If he had come by the door, he would see the wedding garment. Yeah. Oh, listen to this. That if the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how are we going to be represented any other way? Amen. If the first church age had to come to the door of Christ Jesus, be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to put on the wedding garment, how are we coming any other way? If you come by the Methodist, by the Baptist, or by the Pentecostals, or any other denomination, you will be bound and cast out into outer darkness. You've got to come by Christ Amen. Jesus, the way, the door, the truth, the light. Amen. All right. Same voice. Revelations 21, or Revelations 1, 10 and 13. I don't want you to notice. The voice that he heard speaking to him had the clearness of a trumpet. Amen. You know how a trumpet sounds? It gives a shrill sound. What does a trumpet mean in the Bible? War. Anytime you see a trumpet blow in a war in the Bible time, it sounded meant a war. Either a liberation or something to take place. Now, he after the church ages is over. And everything was come ready. Make ready the setting of the fourth chapter here. The church ages was done. He had done left the earth, you see. Remember, the voice that spoke to him behind him in the seven golden candlesticks. The work was finished. Amen. And now that same voice is speaking up in heaven. Amen. What was it? He had done redeemed his people. His earthly work was finished, and he was in glory, calling to John, Come up hither! Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, man. That makes me feel like shouting on the eve of New Year. Oh, my. There you are. See, ready. Come up here. War. This is the setting of the great battle. The people that rejected God's message, rejected the Holy Spirit, the messenger of the seven churches, the one that had rejected this message of his grace, had nothing left but judgment was ready. Amen. All right, he's making ready to pour out the plagues upon the earth now. Come up here and I'll show you what's going to take place. Christ rejecting godless sinners, I'm going to pour out my wrath upon them. What's the setting? Oh, if we go down through the night, you get more of it and more of it all the time. We can't get everything in here. We have to keep referring from place to place. How that it's going to be a terrible thing for those. When the last trumpet sounds, and when the last battle is fought, when the last sermon's preached, when the last song is sung, and we stand up the judgment seat of Christ. 
You're going to be asked, why didn't you receive it? What did you do with the life that I give you? You'll be asked to give a reason. What then? You've heard me sing that song or try it. What then? What then? When the great book is open, what then? When the ones that reject the message will be asked to give a reason, what then? Uh, go to stand there just as certain as this book is written. Amen. You'll be going to stand there and be asked for a reason. Oh, it pays us, my brother, sister. It behooves us as sons and daughters of God to check up on ourselves every hour of the day. Amen. Paul said, I die daily, yet I live not I, but Christ lives in me. See? Be checked up because you don't know what hour you're going to be summoned to answer on high. Now, heard the voice of the trumpet. All right. Note, note what John said. He said here in the last part of this first chapter. First voice is like a trumpet that talked with me. It said, come up hither. Come up here. I showed you the church ages on earth. Now come up here. I'm going to show you something take place up here. Amen. See, Christ the leper then. He had gone up into glory. Amen. The church ages slew. Showed that his spirit is finished here and he had gone into glory and was calling for John to come up. And he showed him what else is going to take place. Come up hither. Now, we notice John, the second chapter, the second verse. Notice quickly. John added this. I immediately. <laughs> Oh, if I act funny, I just feel good. John added, immediately I was in the Spirit. When you hear the voice of God speak to you, something happens. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, did it happen to you like that? Amen. It did to me 31 years ago. And I've never been the same since. Oh, when he said, come up to me, all oh, you that labor heavy laden. I'll give you rest. It changed me. John said immediately, I was in the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Oh, I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on that throne. See, John left the earth now. Christ had left the earth in the form of the Holy Spirit and had returned back into the body again. Today the body sits there as a memorial, as a sacrifice. We get to that right on down to the chapter here. But the Spirit of Christ come back to live in the church, to live in us. Now he actually showed the end of the age of his work here. He went on up into heaven and said, I'll show you what's going to be after this. After the church age. He said, John, I can't talk to you down there anymore because I've left down here. I'll come up higher. Come up here with me. Amen. I'll show you what's going to take place here after. Oh, my. Mm. Caught up in the vision. Caught up in the glory. His experience must have been something like that of Paul's. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4, if you're putting it down. 2 Corinthians 2 to 4, Paul was caught up one day in in the vision too. Did you know that? Yeah. And he saw things that wasn't expedient for him to even talk about. Fourteen years, never even mentioned it. See? But listen at the difference between them. What Paul saw, he was forbidden to speak of it. Amen. Amen. Or to put it out to the public. Amen. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. I don't mean he could do it. Amen. Well, a little trip I took one day. <laughs> I've never got over it and never will. See, he, he saw things that he couldn't talk about. Amen. I guess he didn't have words to. He was caught up in the third heaven, though. See, up in the third heaven. How different. When John was caught up and seen Jesus, he was set right in a book. What you have seen. And give it back. Send it back to the churches. Paul was forbidden to speak and John was even asked to put it in a book. So it would go all down through the ages. Oh my. It's revealed now. To be revealed in this last age. It wasn't revealed in his days. It's revealed now. As we go along. Oh, and notice, 
John, being taken up immediately at the church age, was a type of the raptured church. Amen. Immediately after the church age is over, this lady of the church age, then comes the rapture. Hallelujah. The church goes up like John did. Amen. Into the presence of God. Oh, that just winds my soul. Caught up at the rapture of the church. And it's at this place the book of Revelations is written. See, at the end of the church age. Now, I got a little something here I want to clear up for something that's been an old hanger for a long time amongst many Christians. And I thought today when I was studying, writing out scriptures and finding names and different colors and things, we'll get into them after a while, the rainbows and the symbols and so forth. I was uh, uh, writing these scriptures out here so that I could look back to them and refer to them if I go on a long call. Usually if I was going to speak on something like this, I'd, uh, it would be different. I would try to know it by heart. But this way, when you just have a little time, I like to refer to it because it goes all the way through the scriptures, back and forth. Now, in Matthew 16, 13, we find this. If you're putting the scriptures down... Um, Matthew, if you want to return, if you want to turn to it, all right. Matthew sixteen thirteen, it's a. Uh, oh, we'll just turn back and read it, and then we'll have it sure. Matthew the sixteenth chapter, and the thirteenth verse. Listen closely now as we read. Sixteen thirteen, when Peter came, or when Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Who do man say I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and I are one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed it to thee. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And now and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ, Listen close now. All right. For the time, begin, from that time, begin here. I want to get another. You can read on down. Get the 28th verse here because you read the rest of it when you go home. Very, very, I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Amen. Oh, think of it. Some standing here, some standing here shall not taste the death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. What a statement. How the critic likes to pick that up and just show how dumb he is. See? How he likes to get a hold of that and it's come to pass and they didn't know nothing about it. See? All right, after... Peter's rock confession, which we know that this confession is, he would build his church on this same rock. Not Peter being a little stone, as a Roman Catholic tries to say it, but Peter's confession of the revelation. Yeah. That's the church. God will reveal it. Not a confession of this man, because later he backslid. Not a confession of him being the Son of God because they knew he was the Son of God. Peter just said it. But what it was was the revelation that had been revealed from heaven that he was the Son of God. Amen. Said flesh and blood never taught it to you. But my Father which is in heaven revealed it to you. Upon this rock, that rock confession, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hope we don't run out of time too quick here now. That we can get right into this and we want to see how that's clothed into the human being. It's a beautiful story right here. We can just get to it. All right. Yes, the rock confession, what Peter was. He would build his church upon Peter's confession. 
He said, Some that stand here shall not taste the death till they see the, the Son of God coming in His kingdom. I remember, He spoke some. That was more than one, wasn't it? Some would be many more than one. But I looked, all His disciples were standing there, and He was asking each one of them, What do you think about this, and what do you think about that? But He said, There's some of you standing here. Some standing here will not taste the death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Oh my, what a statement. Think, 2,000 years ago that was stated. Will it, will, is God's word infallible? Amen. Every word that He says will come to pass. Amen. Now, if we want to turn right over to then the 17th chapter of Matthew is the next. When He's taken a few days after that, He's taken Peter, James, and John up into the mountain apart to be a witness, Peter, James, and John, and they seen the kingdom of God come in power. They seen the coming of the kingdom of God rehearsed. Amen. Amen. Oh, they were brought into view of watching the kingdom of God be rehearsed as it comes. Amen. The issuing in of the millennium. They seen the rehearsal. Some time ago, a bunch of ministers, Oral Roberts is one of them, Cecil D. Mills, when he wrote this Ten Commandments, he called up Brother Sakarian, Brother Roberts, many preachers across the land, any preacher could come, and he invited them to come into the studio before the picture was ever released, and let them see the rehearsal of it before it was ever showed out when he was charging $25 a ticket. But they'd seen the rehearsal of it, that they might pass their opinion on whether there was any critics about it or what could be said, and so forth. They'd seen it before the public seen it. Jesus said, Son of you standing here, Amen. Amen. will not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God coming in power. Amen. Or see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom, brother. See the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. A few days after that, he'd taken Peter, James, and John and went up into a high mountain. And there he was transfigured before them, his sun shining would be like his garments that he had on. How many times have we struck it in the parables that run it through the Bible? You can take one text of scripture and tie the whole Bible together with it. Amen. Yes, sir. Not a leaf nowhere. It's all dobbed up with the power of God. Amen. The devil couldn't squeeze around if he had to. That's right. He can't get into those sainted people who have put their testimony out there and believed in the kingdom of God. He took every scripture and dobbed it up with Holy Ghost power. Amen. Amen. Washed it over in the blood. The world can't get into it. The devil can't get into it. They are dead. Their life is hidden. Christ through God sealed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. How can the devil bother them? Mm. There they are, in this condition now, over in this place, and he saw the coming of the rehearsal. And what was the first thing he saw? The first thing he saw in the coming was Moses represented the dead saints that would be resurrected. Elijah was standing there. Oh, I want you to notice. What will take place? That was Moses first. That's all these six ages that they slept. Amen. Six church ages. Not only that, but Elijah was there. Amen. The messenger of the last day. When his group all the transfigured, the raptured. Amen. 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 Now in the future, we need a coming. What did they all, all had gathered with him? Oh my. What was it? His promise to Peter, James, and John was fulfilled. Right. Because he said, Some stand here will not taste the death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, and they've seen the rehearsal of it. Then after this, after the resurrection, I'd like to bring you to another thing. After Jesus had died, buried, on St. John 21 20, some critics started this in the early days. Right while we're in the lesson, let's clean it up. And 
St. John 20, 21. Jesus had met with his disciples, fed them fish and bread upon the fire. And as they went up the bank, John leaned up on his bosom. And Peter asked the question, said, what will happen to this man? Jesus loved John. John was a man of love. And he said, what will happen to this man? What's going to be his estate? What's going to be his future? And Jesus said to them, What is it to you if he tarries until I come? Till I return. What is it? And the disciples made a mistake. They said that Jesus said that if, uh, if he was going to live till the coming. But Jesus did make no mistake. Right here in Revelation, the fourth chapter, Christ kept his word. He brought John up into heaven and rehearsed the whole thing to him. So, he he saw the preview. (laughs) He saw it just as though he lived on earth and saw the whole church ages come to pass with the coming of the Lord. The whole book of Revelation. Oh, my. See how impalpable these promises is? Now your children, James, the dead, John, and the rest of them, wouldn't even let Paul see it, tell it, nothing. He said, what is it to you if he tarries until I come? And be it they said that, he just chose John and took him up and showed him the whole thing before he even died, just like he lived the whole thing through. Amen. Showed him what it would be. Amen. Brother Patty, isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Oh. Hallelujah. He picked him right up. Right here, the fourth chapter and the second verse proves it. He's showing things which was, which is, and what shall come. Amen. Amen. He's showing the church age, the coming of the Jews, the pouring out of the plagues, the rapture, the coming again in the millennium, and the eternal home of the same. Amen. Uh, Just as though he lived right down through the whole thing. He saw it all happened. Amen. He just talked him up and showed him the, the, the film that he's turning. <laughs> Let him see the whole thing rehearsed. Oh, my. It's caught up. Fulfilled his promise in, in Revelations 4 and 2. Before his death, he was caught up in the Spirit and seen things just as though he had lived. He, he seen it all rehearsed. Thus, he saw in a vision exactly what would have took place and what did take place on the earth from that time until the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Short term in a vision. So then the disciples, or no one that ever said that he said he had come in that age, he said, What is it to you if otherwise if he tarries till I come? Then he took him up and rehearsed the thing to him and showed him what was going to happen. Amen. Oh, I just love that. Mm. Oh my. Notice now, let's see what was it. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one set upon it. Upon the throne. There was a voice that called him. Oh, that voice. Oh, I can't get away from that. That voice of that one behind him. Then he looked down there and he showed him all the church ages because he was standing in the church ages. The seven golden candlesticks. Then he heard that voice say, the church ages cease, that voice left the earth. Went up. When he got into glory, he heard it say, Come up here! I'm going to show you what's going to happen from here after. Oh, my. Amen. That voice. Let's speak on that voice tonight. i got some scriptures right here. Let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. And just listen over here what this voice is going to say. Oh, we all know what it's going to say without before we read it, don't we? We know what's going to happen. The trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Is that right? You are put it down. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. The voice. That voice was the voice of Christ. Is that right? Amen. The voice of Christ. For the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with the Lord. Amen. The same voice. Amen. That son of John. The same voice that said to John, is the same voice that will summon the church someday. Amen. Summon the church. Also the same voice that summoned John to come up is the same voice that summoned dead lives without a grave. Amen. That same voice.
voice of the archangel. Christ is in the voice of the archangel. Voice of the archangel. See? Oh, that trumpet voice of Christ summons John to come up. The same voice summons Lazarus. Did you know it's to the grave of Lazarus? He spoke with a loud voice. And I just said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. It summons him from the dead. And he answered, here am I. Amen. And he come from the dead after his dead and his body rocking down. That same voice said to John, Come up here! Amen. I'll show you some things that's fixing to happen. That same voice that shall sound when the dead in Christ arise for the trumpet. The trumpet. What is the trumpet? The voice of Christ. The same one sounded and summoned him up. He heard the voice like a trumpet. Sound and said, Come up here. See how the resurrection will be? It will be in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. That clear sounding voice. And he'll summons the church. Glory, come out of it. That great summonsing voice. God help me to hear it that day. Amen. I've often said, I know as a mortal, Rodney, I know that there's a big dark door set before me. It's called death. Every time my heart beats, I'm one beat closer to that door. Some of these days I got to go into it. But I don't want to go in like a coward, screaming and hollering. I want to go in this, wrapping myself in the robes of His righteousness. Amen. Knowing this, I want to know Him in the power of His resurrection. Amen. That someday when He calls, I'll come out from among the dead. Amen. When He summons me to appear on high for the truth, oh, shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. By my love, I'll be changed in a moment in a twinkle of an eye, and shall go with the rest of them up to meet the Lord in the air. That trumpet voice, sound clear, loud. Mm. Oh, it will be the same, the same at His coming. There's no uncertain sound about it. There was nothing uncertain to John when he heard that voice say, Come up! He come. Amen. When Lazarus was in the dead, in the grave, in his soul, four days' journey somewhere, I don't know where it was at. I don't think any of us does. Wherever it was, it didn't make a bit of difference. He just made one sign to a man that the skin worms had eaten his body up, stinking in the grave. That clear sounding trumpet said, Lazarus, come forth! There a man oh, dead and rotten shook himself and cut out of the grave. Oh, yeah. Amen. Nothing uncertain about that, is it, brother? No uncertainty to there. It's the same thing tonight. When a clear sounding voice says, Sinner, yes. repent! Amen. I'll give you eternal life. Sure. Thank you. Repent, everyone of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the summons. Nothing uncertain about it. I'm a witness that is true. Oh, hallelujah. There's other witnesses, millions of them throughout the world today that's a witness that it's a truth. Amen. When the Bible comes the words of God, every word of God is a trumpet. Amen. Every sound of the word is a trumpet. Amen. The gospel trumpet. Amen. And when it sounds, it's a truth. Amen. When it says, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing uncertain about that. He's the same. Amen. Yes, sir. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Nothing uncertain about that. Amen. Amen. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life. Amen. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe us out of this. Amen. Nothing uncertain about that. Amen. He shall live. Amen. My flesh and drink, my God has eternal life, and I'll raise him up again at the last day. Well, Nothing uncertain about it. Nothing. It's a certain sound. Oh, I know it. I heard it sound in my poor Irish heart one day. Me, a little old sinner, how could it ever do for me? But I believed it was a certain sound. I accepted it. I'm a witness that is true. Amen. Amen. Someday he'll summon us again. We're going out of the world. Oh, there's no uncertain about that trumpet. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
No uncertain sound any time. He sounds today. When he calls, it's just the same when he tells us anything. Now, let's get back to the verse. And a, behold, a throne was set in heaven, second verse. And one set on it. No. A throne, he sat on the throne. He wasn't no more back down in the candlesticks now on earth. The rapture done come. He was in glory, sitting on his throne. I want you to notice, on down we'll find even in the fifth chapter, it was not the throne of mercy. It wasn't the throne of mercy anymore. It was the throne of judgment. It wasn't the throne of grace. The throne of judgment because fire and lightning and thunders issued forth from it. No more mercy is over. The church age is finished. He that's filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous still. He that's holy is holy still. No more throne of mercy. Tonight, the blood lays on that throne. And it's the mercy seat for every sinner that's seeking mercy. But on that day, it won't be a mercy seat then. It'll be a judgment seat with an angry God sitting there. Where if the righteous is scarcely saved, where will the sinner ungodly appear? Even when he comes in the clouds of his glory, the mountains will try to find a place to hide. Where will we go to stay there? Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other pounds I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, my, what a lesson. No uncertain sound. And he's strong, he's set on his throne. He's no more here. That's another thing. It's a proof that the church is caught up before the great tribulation. See? Why? Here he is on the throne in glory. The church is gone and then comes in the tribulation. Amen. Always said that in the days of Noah, Noah was in the ark before one drop of rain fell. Lot was out of Sodom before the fire fell. And the church will be in glory before the atomic falls. That's right. Before the atomic falls. Say, what about that first one? His own heathens. Not Christians. Now, notice, oh, he's finished his work at earth. And he's stuck his church, and now he sends the judgment. The world rejected him, and he sends his judgment. He and his church has gone to glory. John, there on the Isle of Pat- Patmos, a uh, revelator to the church, has been the type of the church which is lifted up in the glory, come up hither. Showing, you say, he represented the church to everyone that hears this word. John represented him. Amen. John was a representative of the blood of Jesus Christ, testimony of the word. He was a witness of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, of the personal fellowship with Christ. And he represented the entire church and every man or woman, boy or girl that ever believed in Christ except him on the same day. He'll be summoned someday. Come up hither. He'll be caught up before the tribulation. Remember, the tribulation time hasn't set in yet. This has been the time setting of the judgment. John is being showed now what's going to take place after the church age. See? So it was. Now... Notice again in the third verse or second. A throne set in heaven and one set on the throne. Now the same spirit that was in the earth had left and had gone to glory and was setting the same Jesus that's with us tonight in mercy was gone to glory and setting on the throne. And he that sat on the throne was to look upon a jasper and sardine stone and there was a rainbow around about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. I'm going to quit because these other brothers to preach. Maybe I'll pick this up in the morning. Right? And so, to look upon as an emerald. Oh. <laughs> oh. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all on flame. Don't you love that? Yeah. Our fellow on Pentecost that cleansed and made them clean. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. John, called and summoned by the Lord Jesus. 
promised by God back there that he would see the coming of the Son of Man. Peter, James, and John and them standing present when Jesus spoke to him and said, There are some standing here will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming. Amen. He didn't say all were standing there, but some. Amen. And they went a few days after that and saw the order of the resurrection rehearsed and the coming of the Lord. Elijah represented the dead saints of being Moses and be resurrected. Elijah represented the translated by remember, Moses was first and then Elijah. Elijah was to be the messenger of the last day that with him and his group would come the resurrection. Would come the, would come the rapture, I mean. Moses brought in the resurrection and Elijah brought in the rapture group. Amen. And there are both of them is represented right there. And after a while they noticed them and they seen and Peter said, let's build three tabernacles, let's some go under the law, let's some go under Elijah, let's go some of them this way. While they were just Speaking, a voice spoke and said, This is my beloved son, hearing him. And when they looked, they seen Jesus only, everything had yeah. wielded into one. Oh, and he was the light, the truth, the way, the uh, door, hallelujah. the rainbow. Oh, tomorrow we got a great lesson, the Lord will. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tomorrow we take the judgments, we take the siren stone, see what it represents, what part it played. And we take the 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 jasper, and we take the uh, all the different stones, and we take these all down to Ezekiel, back into Genesis, back over to Revelations, come down in the middle of the Bible, tie it together these different stones and colors and so forth, and then we bring it right straight back to that and see if that ain't right. Amen. See, see if it ain't the same color and everything, just the same thing, and the same Holy Spirit, the same God, showing the same signs, same water, doing the same thing. Amen. Just as He promised. Told Peter, James, and John, and them standing there, all the disciples said, Some of you will not see death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. <laughs> said that John said, Peter said, What are you going to do with him? He said, That fellow, what's going to happen to him? He said, What is it to you if he sees me coming? <laughs> and he let him live to see it. Amen. As the rest of them was dead and gone, John lived to see the coming of the Lord rehearsed in power. The whole scene set from his time until the judgment is over and the millennium is issued in. John saw every bit of it. And the millennium over and the kingdom may be started. Hallelujah. So he keeps his word, doesn't he? Amen. We'll mark it on the second verse. The Lord willing, begin the third verse in the morning. Let us bow our heads. How many tonight in this church that knows, my brother, that sister, that you're going to be summoned someday, whether you're ready or not, whether you are prepared or not, you're going to be summoned to meet God. That trumpet's going to sound. And when it does, it'll sound to condemnation to you and for you'll never live again and you'll be tormented in a devil's pits of hell for maybe millions of years. Or it'll summon you on high to meet the glorious saints, just as sure as God kept His word to Peter, James, and John, just as sure as He kept it to John the Beloved, the Revelator, just as sure as He kept His promise to the church ages, it's that sure that He promised in this last day He'd send down in a latter rain and would bring back the same Spirit was up on the earth in Him. The light should come in the evening time and show the same power, the same signs and everything that he did in his day, he would show it again in this open door in the last day. Here it is. We got it right with us now, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. You're, it's preaching to you. It's teaching to you. It's trying to get you to see what's right and wrong. It's the Holy Spirit himself speaking through human lips, operating among human beings, trying to show mercy and grace. And you haven't received him as yet. And on this New Year's Eve night, would you like to raise up your hands to God and say, God, let me receive the power that was on John the Revelator, that when I'm summoned, I'll appear before you in peace like he did. Raise your hand. God bless Amen. you. God bless you. Just all over the church. God bless you. Let me be ready to answer my summons. Our Heavenly Father, as this New Year's Eve, just about two hours now, and it'll be over. 
There will be a new year. What we have done this year, we have did. Many things that I've done that I'm ashamed of myself. I repent of those, Lord. Amen. Yes, and there's a lot of things that I've done that many of my brethren didn't understand. Many of my brothers out in the fields don't understand why I did them. But, Father, I did them because I was led to do them. I pray, Father, that you'll never let me be ashamed of that leading, but lead me on, Lord, to continue to do as I am led to do. Help me, God, because I seek sincerely to know your will that I might do it. To bring, as you showed me many years ago when I left this church, the bread of life to the peoples of the world. When I saw that great mountain of bread and white-robed saints coming from all over the earth, they eat this bread of life. Oh, God, let me, oh, God, let me never, never fail to feed the people on the bread of life. Bless these hungry souls in here that raise their hands just now. They're seeking for more of life. I pray that you'll fill them with the Holy Ghost, Lord, each one of them. God grant. Give them blessings. Help our brethren everywhere. Bless our ministering brethren. That's fixing to come up again now in a few moments. Others will be speaking. We pray that they will give out the bread of life to us tonight, Father, as we will listen closely and reverently to hear the voice. Grant it. Bless us and may this new year dawn with new hopes, bringing new thoughts, new revelations, new power. Oh, everything may it be renewed to us again, Lord, of thy blessings and promises. We commit ourselves with our prayer into thy hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my brethren. I'm sure we can all rejoice we wasn't in any hurry at all and would have uh, been delighted to have just kept listening to Brother Branham here tonight bringing us this message. And it's the message that encourages us because we know that God is in it. Amen. And that what he has said, he is well able to perform it even unto his coming again. Yes. And he will do it. Not only that, I've oft times said that we say a lot of times to people, do you believe that Jesus Christ can heal you? And, uh, of course, you can usually get a uh, consent to it, but the thing of it is, do you believe he'll heal you now? Amen. And then sometimes people say, well, I don't know. A lady that just passed away at the hospital went in to see her, said, Sister, do you still believe that Jesus saves? She said, uh, yes, I do. I said, do you believe that Jesus Christ heals? She said, yes, sir, I do. I said, do you believe he heals you right now? She said, that I don't know. And I said, sister, you can know it because the promise is to you. Amen. Amen. He's made the promise. Now, uh, while we're uh, going to hear another one of our brothers here, we have several around in this on New Year's Eve, we don't have a prearranged program. We just come together and let God move as He directs and leads. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time since we've heard Brother Pat Tyler and give his testimony or whatever the Lord lays on his heart. And we're going to ask Brother Pat to bring whatever God lays on his heart. But before he comes up, uh, good Christian brother back there, Brother Randall Heinemann, and he's here, and he has the talent for the Lord to sing. And, you know, I've just desired him to be able to use that talent for the glory of God. So I'm going to ask Brother Randall if he would come up and sing for us. Uh, he's sung for us one or two times here. And I'm going to ask him to use his talent again tonight for the Lord Jesus, if you will, if he'll come now to sing for us. He's got some youngsters back there he's helping take care of, but... Maybe he can get away now to come up and sing for us. While he's doing that, we also have Brother Kinder back here. We love Pentecostal brother. We're happy for him. And we have Brother J.T. Parnell back there somewhere. I think he's sitting right back here on the outside of the road. And mighty happy for all these good Christian brothers, others of the faith. And let's see. Brother Beeler's back here, too. Yes, Brother Beeler is here. 
and uh,